Now, over the past year, a lot of people have dealt with a disaster on top of a disaster. Wildfires and hurricanes, just to name two, all in the middle of a pandemic. Now, though, there's a resource out there to help guide us through life's disasters. It's called Dr. Disaster's Guide to Surviving Everything, essential advice for any situation life throws your way. And it's written by NBC News' own senior medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres. He joins us now. Doctor, good morning. First, can I say, even before you wrote this book, I knew you were somebody that I'd want to be in a foxhole with, but this just proves it. So this is very exciting. So first, tell us what inspired you to write this book and what do you hope people are going to take away from it? Well, Savannah, thank you very much. And actually started looking at this book about two or three years ago, and that was the beginning of the thought process behind the book. And we started writing it actually a couple years ago before the pandemic hit. But obviously when the pandemic hit, we shifted focus a little bit. And what we wanted to do is essentially give people information, basic information they could use in any type of disaster, because you don't really have time to research it when a disaster is happening. And you brought up a great point. You know, this year alone, we've had the pandemic, we've had earthquakes, we've had tornadoes, we've had the storms, the winter storms they had down in Texas, volcano eruptions, I mean, you name it, it happens every year. And throughout my lifetime, including when I was a child and I was out in the woods with my dad, he was teaching me survival techniques at that point, how to start a fire, how to navigate in the wild, all the way up through the Air Force where I went through survival training and we had to learn how to live by ourselves out in the woods without any food and without any shelter, make sure we took care of ourselves. And then through the disasters I've either responded to as a military person to try and evacuate people out of, disasters I've been through myself, or disasters I'd covered at NBC News, I saw common themes and things that people weren't doing right and things that people were doing right and basic things that they just need to do to make sure they can get through that. And so that started the process of writing the book. I wrote the book and ended up just it ended up getting published this week. And so I'm very thankful for you guys for letting me on, be on here and talk about it. Oh, Con congratulations yes. to you. My, my first question, are you Dr. Disaster? Are we <laughs> supposed to start calling you that now? <laughs> You know, that's just, no, I'm still Dr. John to everybody, but you know, certainly a Dr. Disaster in one aspect of my life. <laughs> All right, my real question. Now, your book goes into what everyone should have in their home to survive the most common disasters. What are the main things on that list? You know, and, and first and foremost, the main thing, the main theme throughout the whole thing is to have that mindset that you need to survive this disaster. And the best way to do that, and I was taught, again, from being a child, they definitely drilled it into our head in the military, is having that will to survive. And there have been instances, numerous instances, of people that did everything wrong, but they had a reason to make it back. And usually that reason is family, kids, you know, I'm going to get back for them, and they end up surviving it. By the opposite end of the spectrum, there were people who were experts in survival, and they gave up on that will and they ended up dying. And so having that will is extremely important, but so too are having some basic essentials. And first and foremost, you, you need to realize that there are things you need to survive. You know, you need water, you need food at some point, you definitely need shelter. And so having those things set up. So if you're inside your house, the things you want are basically water. You want to make sure you have a gallon per person per day. And if you know something's coming like a hurricane or a winter storm, Fill the bathtub with water. That's one key to have water around. But otherwise, mm. if you can store water somewhere, that can certainly help you. Food supply, food that will last, beans, rolled oats, those power bars, energy bars, those things can survive a lot. And then some type of heat source, especially in the winter. And you know, definitely want the clothes you can put on to make sure that you stay warm, but also if you can have a heat source. But you have to be careful because if it's a certain type of generator or heat source, you want to make sure you do it outside because carbon monoxide poisoning is a huge thing. And every disaster I've ever been in or responded to, somebody has died from carbon monoxide poisoning. Mm. So you have to be very careful with that. Oh, my goodness. All right, Doctor, I want to switch gears to something else that you talk about in the book, which is fascinating, wildlife encounters. I mean, the weather's getting warmer, more people spending time outside. So what happens if we run into a wild animal? What are the first steps we should take? You know, I'm a huge advocate of being outside because it is so wonderful to be out there. But you have to remember, we're going into their environment. And the main reasons animals attack you, it's not because they're rabid or it's not because they're looking for food. It's because the number one reason is you surprise them. So don't surprise them, most, first and foremost. And so don't try to sneak up on any animal. The second reason is because you interfere with their food supply. They have captured something and they want to eat that and you're interfering with it. And then the third one is they're protecting their young. There is a thing to that mama bear protecting her cubs. She will do that 
to the point of dying if she has to. So be careful there. So the main thing, if you do encounter wildlife, it's like anything else throughout these disasters. You know, take a split second, take a deep breath, and just calm yourself down, and then slowly walk away as you gently talk to the animal and just say, you know, everything's going to be fine. Just slowly walk away. If the animal keeps coming after you, then what you want to do is make yourself as large as possible. If you have a coat, open up the jacket, wave your hands, scream and shout, because they're not going to attack anything they don't think they can defeat. And then if the animal for some reason does attack, you need to fight. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to run because instinctively animals will chase prey. So if you run, you become prey and they start chasing you down. So don't do that. It's the hardest thing not to do, but it's the most important thing that you don't want to do. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Think about it now, because in the moment, you're going to be a little bit scared. Yeah, so. exactly. Also, that, that little detail of uh, then that's when you have to fight back is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably would at that Sorry, point. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Dr. Torres, thank you so much. We really Fascinating. appreciate this and look forward to reading more. Yeah, you required bet. reading. You know, this is a, yeah, a great book of a few themes. And, you know, Father's Day is coming up. Kids are going off to college. A great book for them to have. Absolutely. Perfect. I love the cover, too, Dr. John. Dr. Disaster, thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.